Hello and welcome to this unit of the IMOX course METSI, where the heart and the cardiovascular system are the center of our attention. Cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death globally, estimating about 18 million cases each year. They have been defined by the World Health Organization as a group of disorders of the blood vessels and the heart that include coronary heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, peripheral arterial disease, rheumatic heart disease, etc. This said number is also connected to the METSI. Since cardiovascular diseases and the metabolic syndrome share many determining factors such as hypertension, high blood lipids and high blood glucose. You probably have heard of the term atherosclerosis, which is a name of a chronic disease affecting our arteries, leading to a sickening and stiffening of our arterial walls. These alterations in our arteries are caused by a build-up of plaques and fat in the inner lining of the artery. Atherosclerosis is the underlying cause of about 50% of deaths in the Western countries. Risk factors of atherosclerosis include high cholesterol and triglyceride levels, smoking, diabetes, obesity, limited physical activity and the consumption of high amounts of saturated fatty acids. So why do you mention only me as the reason for this mess? Before you said that high blood sugar also has something to do with cardiovascular diseases. Ali, they also mentioned that high blood pressure is related to it, and I know that too much of me can cause that. Don't worry, Ali. I'm sure that we all have some responsibility here. Yes, you're right, Asu. We will refer to each of you in detail in this unit. To better understand what is going on in arteries during the build-up of these plaques, we have to talk about the anatomy of a healthy artery. In general, all arteries consist of three layers. The intima, which is the innermost layer, the media, which is the middle layer, and the adventitia, the outer layer. Each layer has its specific function and also structure. The intima in young persons is very thin and consists of flat and smooth endothelial cells sitting on a basal lamina. These smooth and flat cells allow an easy blood flow in our arteries, but also send shear stresses from the blood flow. If these shear stresses are too high, the endothelial cells can react with the production of nitric oxide, which in turn induces a relaxation of the smooth muscle cells in the media, so that the arterial diameter gets larger and this essentially lowers the shear stress of the blood flow on the intima. The middle layer, the media, consists mainly of circumferentially oriented smooth muscle cells, which are embedded in a complex network of collagen and elastin fibers. The media, on one hand, is due to the smooth muscle cells able to actively increase and decrease the diameter of the artery at different uh, physiological situations. On the other hand, the media contributes mainly to the mechanical properties of the artery. The outer layer adventitia consists of thick and wavy collagen fibers and is therefore mainly acting as a protecting shield preventing an overstretching of the artery. However, during atherosclerosis several processes are going on in our arteries, which result in a changed structure of the arterial wall. There are four stages of atherosclerosis. The duration of the stages of atherosclerosis largely depends on the healthy conditions of every person. For example, Certain risk factors such as hypertension, smoking, diabetes mellitus, obesity and genetic preposition can accelerate this process. The first stage is the fatty streak stage, in which cholesterol and other substances accumulate in the intima of the artery. This stage is often seen in young people and is in generally re reversible with lifestyle changes such as diet and exercise. So the second stage is the fibrous plaque stage, in which plaque begins to build up in the arterial walls. This stage is generally not reversible and may require medical intervention to prevent further progression. Also the elasticity of blood vessel decreases in this stage. The plaque in this stage gets also calcified and thereby stiffens the arterial wall. Common treatments at this stage include medications to control cholesterol and blood pressure, as well as procedures such as angioplasty and stenting to open blocked arteries. The third stage is the complicated plug stage, in which the plug becomes unstable and may rupture. This would be recognized by the body as an injury and blood clotting cells are re recruited to the area which leads to the formation of blood clots or thrombi. If this blocks a critical blood vessel in the heart, 
This may cause heart attack. When the closure opens in the brain, the person has a stroke. Common treatments at this stage include medications to prevent blood clotting and procedures to remove and stabilize the plaque, such as coronary artery bypass surgery or arterectomy. Finally, the fourth stage is the end stage of atherosclerosis, in which the blood flow is severely reduced or completely blocked. This stage can be life-threatening and often requires surgery to restore blood flow, such as coronary artery bypass surgery or heart transplant surgery. Atherosclerosis can affect most of the arteries in our body, including arteries in the heart, brain, arms, legs, pelvis and kidneys, but some areas are more prone to the development of these fatty depositions especially when there is a sheer stress caused by the blood flow, but we come to that later. We reach the end of this video where we started with very general aspects of cardiovascular diseases such as the definition given by the World Health Organization, a bit of epidemiology and the structure of the dirt wall. Then we moved on and discussed how cardiovascular diseases and especially atherosclerosis are related with the metabolic syndrome. And last but not least, we went through the different stages of atherosclerosis.